Hey, so I'm up on top of this 2019 Grand Design Momentum. So let's take a look at the front cap, right? So when we're looking at the units, I'm looking for stuff like stress cracks. And so there's a bunch of stress cracks all on this front wall. And you can see compared to like the size of my fingers, they're not too bad, but these stress cracks are all the way down. And that's indicating that this whole corner piece, you know, it's moving. Um, in that, you can see here that the sealants are separated. So this is gonna allow water to bleed past this molding through those gaps and tears and get back behind the molding, cause damage to the screws. It's gonna chase the water in through to the sidewall and cause damage to the aluminum, the wood, and anything else that's back to the insulation. It can also even lead and go down to the sidewall of the coach and cause damage or osmotic blistering. While we're up here on the roof, you see that there's a big old pocket here. Again, that's gonna allow water to go right inside the roof. It's actually a bubble or a spot where it's just torn loose where there's a, a vapor in there. You can see that the rubber material is lifted in this area a little bit from water getting in because it's glued in place. So if it's nice and tight, and then you see how it's all like soft here. The wood's not bad, but water's been getting in and causing damage to that area. Again, the sealants, if we look close enough, the sealants should have been brought out the rest of the way to at least almost a corner. So there's at least a good inch there that needs to be sealed. You can see where the putty tape has bled out from behind the molding and how they went ahead and they did two screws, which is fantastic. Um, usually I usually like to see a secondary screw here toward the end. I call that toenailing. Um, when we're looking at the front screw cover moldings, this is the front screw cover moldings and this molding goes all the way down to the front of the cap. So when we're looking at that, you wanna pay real close attention because as you can see, the sealant separated here and that sealant gets thinner and thinner and thinner as it continues down, it's actually gone all the way down until it starts getting closer down there. But that molding needs to be cleaned and resealed. This molding needs to be cleaned and resealed. This right here is the insert molding. And so what I want you to check on the insert molding is a couple tips. I don't ever wrap the insert molding behind this like the manufacturer does. When that is done that way, when water and dirt get back behind this, it doesn't allow it to escape and then it'll cause it to build up and cause damage. How you can check your insert molding, one, it's, it's very dirty. So you can see the dirt that I'm wiping off, but hear how I'm able to tap it and it's loose. So when this molding becomes loose, it's designed to fit in that track and expand with like a wing. It basically allows the water to deflect off of it. You know, so this raining, but if it's shrunk up enough, it's gonna allow water to get past it, which is gonna cause damage. So, okay, so we're still at this molding. So I just took my pocket knife out, popped the track loose. And what I wanna show you is look at all the dust and dirt and water that's been getting past this insert molding, right? And then look at that, there's no screw there. So there's missing a screw. They did went ahead and put one at the very end, but if there would have been another second screw there, that could have prevented that molding from flexing. And so, and then you can also see that they use the painted screw here, they use the non-painted screw there and so on. So a lot of times when we're pulling apart these insert moldings, we're finding that some screws have been skipped, they haven't been added, or they've been screwed in so tight that they've actually pulled through the molding. Now, these are pre-drilled every six inches. And if you see an area that's coming loose, it's safe to go ahead and drill a small hole and add another screw in. The size of the screw, I wouldn't exceed an inch or inch and a quarter, and it's gonna be a number eight screw. Again, this insert molding, and I'm gonna put this back in here. See, so I'm using my finger to kind of work it back in there. We use a lot of the plastic scrapers, and that makes them pop back in nice and easy. The CRS scrapers that I'm always talking about. But that molding will just work itself back in there. But again, when you can tap on it and you hear that it's loose, it's time to change it. I usually recommend to change it every two to three years. 
So you this is your rain gutter molding. And again, there's one screw added here. They missed the other one at the manufacturer. Look how loose the gutter is, right? The gutter has all this movement. So if I can move it that much just with my finger, imagine what it's doing in the wind. So you see all this flopping around and movement, right? That's that's not good at all. Look at the look at the expansion of my gap just from me moving that gutter just a little bit. I mean, I'm just barely picking up on that guy and it's causing that gap to open and close. To see more of our exterior evaluations on this unit, click right over here. And to hear more about one of our favorite products, click right over there. I've got tons of content just like this. I hope you subscribe to us and don't miss out on my future videos. Thank you so much.